Hey guys, welcome back to Proc Nation and in this video, we're taking a look at the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. So, let's get started. So the way I've described this review is not like a standalone brand new product review. It's more like they took the S20 Ultra, fixed possibly everything there was to fix with it to make it the perfect device and that's what this is. So right off the bat, before we do anything, let's start by talking about the overall design to this because this is by far the most attractive phone I've ever seen. It's so elite looking, the matte finish to this is by far my favorite finish on any smartphone that I've ever seen. So it's got a flat and smooth finish, it matches the design based on which part of it is, I guess, and then it curves to the edge towards the glossier sides, which the camera module also follows. So even though it still suffers from the wobble when you place it on a table, that's a little bit annoying. On the other hand, this rejects fingerprints really, really well. No matter how you try to get fingerprints on there, you won't be getting that. So it's pretty cool if you don't want to put a case on it and show off that matte black. We all know Samsung makes one of the best displays and this is nothing short of that. Probably the best display we've seen because it finally supports Quad HD along with 120 hz in refresh rate, which you weren't pretty much allowed to do before. And it also has the LTPO type panel that fluctuates it from 10 hz all the way up to 120 hz depending on what you're doing on the screen. So what this LTPO panel really enables is for you to get a longer battery life, which is what Samsung was worried about earlier and why they didn't allow us to do it, but it allows you to get that extra battery life by fluctuating the refresh rate. We're so used to phones this big that this one actually kind of feels a little bit smaller, which is quite interesting. The display is 6.8 inches while the S20 Ultra had a 6.9 inch display. The display is flatter and not curved. There's a very gentle curve to the edges. I really like that a lot more. Flatter displays feel like they're more premium and they work a little bit better. So I'm very happy with the display and the design to the display overall, along with the entire design to the body. Now when it comes to the unlocking, you can use the facial recognition or the under display fingerprint sensor, which is 1.77 times bigger than the previous gen. And they do say that it's a lot faster as well. And in my testing, it definitely does feel faster. I know a lot of people said it doesn't feel faster. To me, it definitely does. So speaking of being refined, Let's talk about the processor on this. Just like always, we have the Snapdragon versus the Exynos thing going on again. This time around, we get the Snapdragon 888 in the US market, which is the top of the line flagship from Qualcomm. And here in Malaysia and Europe and all these UK countries, we get the Exynos 2100. That's what we have here right now in Malaysia. This is the Exynos 2100. But this time around, it actually is very comparable. I'm not just talking about statistics and numbers. If you want that, definitely check out Mr. Who's the Boss's video. He did a proper in-depth comparison because he got both versions of it. Here in Malaysia, unfortunately, we don't get the Snapdragon. So his video is very detailed, check that out. But overall, the Exynos has improved a lot. I would even say it is very much comparable to the Snapdragon this time around, which was very hard to say even last year. Personally, in my usage, felt a lot more closer to the Snapdragon than any other version so far, Battery life performance was brilliant. It did not overheat as much at all. Speaking of the battery life and the screen on time, it comes with a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which is pretty similar to the last gen. However, the Exynos handling to this for the battery life has been really, really good. The screen on time that I got on this was above five hours, which is very high for an Exynos device. And that was with streaming YouTube and Netflix for two hours each. So four hours of streaming and then camera and then Instagram. And I was still left with about 50% of battery at the end of the day. Interestingly enough, the clock speeds are slightly higher on the Exynos. So for day-to-day -day tasks, you might even feel like it's snappier than the Snapdragon. But when it comes to gaming and multitasking in general, the Snapdragon is just a better processor. We just have face facts there. Speaking of being smooth and perfect, the UI this is running is the One UI 3.0, but we've upgraded it to 3.1 now that we've had it. They have made some minor improvements and tweaks to this to make it feel a lot better and snappier and responsive and more like a home sort of thing, which I do really like. So the volume controls have become better. Another thing that's pretty interesting is that the Google Home has been moved to the left side when you swipe all the way to the left. You get pretty much everything there for the Google Discover side of things, which I really do prefer. Still going on about refreshing changes, you still have the Samsung Dex that works and operates pretty much the same. This can do that yet again. It can even do it wirelessly now. You don't need an adapter or wire, but if you're connecting to something like the Wii Max it, which we're gonna review a little bit later, like a portable monitor, you can connect your keyboard and mouse and actually get real productivity work done with this without needing your laptop. 
Apart from that, you also get the S Pen support finally on this device. You don't need a Note to use the S Pen, but that is an additional purchase separately. And it really depends on, do you really use the S Pen enough to, to want to get it on this? Because if you have the S Pen with the Note, it comes with the Note, you're happy with it. Uh, but if you're buying it for this separately, then it's a different story. So yeah, those are the two additional features that come with the Samsung device. Now when it comes to the cameras, there aren't major changes here, but they've done a few subtle changes to improve the camera usability and how it feels to actually use the camera. For the lens selection, you can get the 3x of zoom, 10x zoom, ultra wide, as well as the 100x in zoom, which is still there. They've made minor improvements in the software with that as well. So you can finally focus lock or like shake lock, I guess you can call it. So if you zoom in really far before it would shake all over the place, it would be hard to find and stabilize the shot. Now it kind of does that for you with software. So you'll be able to take sharper images. You still have the 108 megapixel camera. The blurring over the edges has been reduced a lot more. So the sharpness of the image overall is pretty, pretty nice. Still does 8K video, but still with 24 FPS. I, I don't understand this. They could do the 30 FPS. The Snap Dragon 888 can handle that. When it comes to photo quality, it's about the same as previous gen. Nothing insane has been changed. Maybe the software rendering of the background blur in live focus videos and pictures or the HDR rendition feels a little bit nicer. I guess it looks more natural than it did before. So the front camera, which is 40 megapixels, finally allows you to choose between the bright skin tone or the natural skin tone. Previously, we were kind of fixed with the bright, which was kind of annoying. But now you have the natural tone, so it looks a lot nicer as well. And if you want to take a picture of yourself without having that glow look, the natural is the way to go and it looks a lot better. Also, the autofocus has been improved because they added the laser autofocus. This was an issue that we had in the previous generation with the S20 where there was a lot of missed focus. So they've really improved on that and it works a lot better as you can see on screen. So other camera features include the director's view, which allows you to shoot with both the front and back camera with all the three lenses at the same time. We've seen this before, nothing very new, but it's new to Samsung. You also get 4K 60 FPS recording with all cameras across the board. The colors overall and the HDR does look and feel a lot more improved than the previous generation. So the camera overall will feel like the best Samsung camera you can find. So while we're on the camera, these are some test shots that we took with the image performance and the video mode performance on the S21 Ultra. The camera looks and feels really good in hand, especially the UI and the software makes it a lot easier to use. You still have all the other features that we know and love from Samsung devices. Zoom quality is really good. The night mode performance has been improved significantly. I even took some selfie comparisons with the iPhone 12 mini and even the night mode comparison. You can see that on screen right now. Now, a lot of people who own the S20 Ultra are gonna be wondering whether it's worth it to switch over or upgrade to the S21 Ultra. It's just basically improvements to what's existing there. So if you're currently happy with your S20 Ultra, then you don't really need the S21 Ultra. But if you're facing a lot of these issues like I talked about, like missing focus and all that stuff and your battery life sucks if you have the Exynos variant, then this is definitely the way to go. Plus, if you want the stylus support, this is the way to go as well. We also just got our hands on the Galaxy Buds Pro and we're gonna be doing a versus video against the Buds Live from previous generation. So if you guys are interested to find out which one is better, make sure you subscribe to the channel for that. So that's about it. That's our review of the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. Now this is a flagship phone from Samsung. If you guys want us to compare this with any other phone in a versus video, we're gonna do it with the Mi 10T Pro, the Mi 11, or the iPhone 12 mini. Let us know in the comments which phone you want us to compare this against. We'll be sure to do that in the next video. We'll see you again in the next video.